Joining me now is Michael Anton, former Trump NSC official and author of The Stakes. Michael, um, are you surprised that no one seems to be talking about how much power these global elites will have under this new post-pandemic world that they want to create? Well, I, I guess I disagree a little. They're talking about how much power they're going to have. They're gloating about it. They're enjoying it. Um, so I'm not surprised because I've been familiar with this crowd for a long time, having worked in the corporate sector and attended conferences like this and, and, and so on over the course of the last 15 or 20 years. And I, I know how they think and what they're trying to do. And it's one of the things that I nudged me in a Trumpist direction five years ago and made me into a wholehearted supporter of the president because, you know, I agree with you. This is this is a bad agenda. It's bad for the country. It's bad for the middle class. Um, it's bad for communities and industries. And it only really enriches the people at the top. Um, I, I found it interesting browsing some of their materials. One of the first things I read was, uh, well, you know, COVID gives us an opportunity to to address inequality. What's been the biggest driver of inequality over the last 30 years? Two, two basically. One is immigration, um, undercutting American wages. And the second is bad trade policy that sends jobs overseas and decimates industries. So inequality has been growing for precisely the agenda that these people want to resume. It's just beyond hypocritical for them to even say the word with a straight face. Yeah. And again, making China richer and China more powerful. That And, and a lot of the people, there are 180 speakers at this Bloomberg conference, but a lot of them are big supporters of outsourcing because it's our it's, responsibility to grow other countries. I used to hear that. You used to see that said as a talking point that, well, if if for every American who drops out of the middle class, somebody in China or India or somewhere else joins it, that's not a bad trade because this class has no fundamental patriotic loyalty to their own country. So they're happy to see American communities get decimated. And then they pat themselves on the back for their morality by saying, well, but other people on the other side of the world are rising, so it's OK. They leave out the part that they're also getting vastly richer from this. And you brought up climate. This is another aspect of the hypocrisy. Everybody, every one of these globalists who's heavily invested in China, both on the production side, they want to use the Chinese labor market because it's cheaper. And they and on the um, sell side, they, they salivate at the idea of this huge consumer market that they have to be in. Well, they know full well how, how bad China's record on pollution is across the board. And they say nothing about it. The Paris Accords uh, basically doesn't do anything to curb Chinese. It lets everybody set their own emissions targets. And the Chinese are going right on burning coal uh, just like they always have. It doesn't seem to trouble Mike Bloomberg or any of his conference attendees. But yeah, they sure do want Americans to take a, a, a serious haircut on the energy side, pay more for, tax, for, for gas and or, you know, give up your car entirely. Hey, I, I have a question, though. Is there a single one of these billionaires who's going to give up his private jet? No. I doubt it. No. And speaking of people at the top, Hillary Clinton is on board totally, Michael, for the Great Reset. It's time to look at what can make capitalism uh, market uh, operations work much more effectively and, frankly, uh, equally. Begin to move away from the shareholder centric approach by shifting some of the incentives and assumptions uh, that have grown into the system over the last 50 years. Uh, Michael, what does she mean by shifting incentives and assumptions? What is old Hillary getting at? Well, I, you know, it's, I find it odd that somebody like Hillary Clinton, who, you know, starts out as like a, a, a sort of low level staffer around Democratic campaigns, ends up a partner at a law firm, which is a real job. Although if you read some of the bios, it's not clear that she was there for any other reason than that her husband was the governor. And so she served as kind of a rainmaker. Then it was first lady. And then, um, you know, a couple a more government jobs, Senate secretary of state never worked in industry in her life and somehow managed to be worth. I don't know what they're worth, but the, the, the Clintons are certainly in, worth into the tens of millions of dollars. So capitalism's working for them, but that's because essentially they're in on the grift. Re reorient the economy to a handful of winners at the very top who then pay out big money to come to conferences, give speeches, book advances, and things like that. Um, they love that system. So why wouldn't they yeah. want to entrench it further and build it up? Michael, we're going to continue to cover this because this is this is part of a, an agenda that's going to be worked on and labored over and pushed uh, for, you know, for years, but we're going to have you back on soon. Fantastic to see you tonight. Thank you so much.